Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a guide to the Freehold Dungeon of BFA. The Freehold entrance is found here, in the south of Tiragard Sound near this convenient neutral flight point. It's a pirate haven complete with cannons and parrots, and there is a rare drop parrot mat from here, so some of us are setting up camp. Our first boss is Sky Captain Crag, along with his parrot mount named Shark Bait, which has a chance to start dropping on Mythic difficulty. This is a pretty straightforward two-phase fight. In Phase 1, now and then he'll pistol shot random group members with unavoidable damage. On tougher difficulties, healers will want to keep people pretty topped up to avoid any trouble with that. His other Phase 1 thing is Charge! He'll put a brown swirl under a random player, and after a few seconds he'll slam on over there on his bird. Get off the swirl, and don't be between the boss and the marked spot. At 75%, he hops off the bird and Phase 2 starts. The parrot starts literally pooping everywhere with vile bombardment. Dodge that because it does damage and also because it's gross. Revitalizing Brew is a cast time heal that needs to be interrupted. After it's kicked, the brew will fall onto the ground and you can channel the bottle to heal yourself if needed. Azerite Powder Shot is a narrow cone spray that he'll aim at a random player. Try to stay spread out in this phase so that you don't clip a whole bunch of people with that. On Heroic and Higher, Sharkbait will periodically dive bomb the area, doing damage and knocking back players in a straight line. If you keep an eye on the parrot, you can see where he's setting up and dodge this, and on higher difficulties you will absolutely need to. Council of Captains is the second encounter, and it's easier than it's going to sound on paper. There's three captains, and in the trash before the boss, you'll recruit one of them to your side to help you fight the other two. Which event, and therefore which captain you get, is randomly set each week. If you try and skip the event and fight all three together, they'll be under one banner, and that's just bad. If you see a glowing dog named Murphy, you want to follow him, loot the keys, and open a cage to recruit Captain Jolly. If you see highlighted Volperas, the whole group has to talk to one. Once all players have had a drink, Captain Eudora is recruited. If you see highlighted Blacktooth Knuckle Dusters at a target dummy, beat them plus a few additional adds, and that will recruit Captain Raoul. Each boss has two abilities that they'll use against you when hostile, and then a passive buff that they'll grant your party if they're on your side. If you're fighting Captain Raoul, you'll deal with his Blackout Barrel. He chucks that on a random non-tank player, and the party needs to kill the barrel and break them out. Unless you don't want their help. And then you can just leave them in the barrel. You might regret it when more people get barreled, though. His second move is Barrel Smash, which does damage and knockback from a brown swirl up in melee. Just get out of all opaque swirly thingies. It's a good rule for WoW. If Raoul is on your side, you'll get the Tapped Keg buff. Any player standing near him gets to do 15% more damage, so cuddle up. If you're fighting Captain Eudora, she'll assault players with Powder Shot, which mostly just makes her annoying to position. She'll also fire Grape Shot across the arena, sweeping the area with a right-to-left cone attack as you face her. Get behind her, or if you're too far out, just move right so that you're out of it quicker. If she's on your team, she'll cast Chain Shot on enemy captains, stunning them for 6 seconds at a time. If you're fighting Captain Jolly, which is just a great name, he'll cast Cutting Surge. That marks the location of a random player and then charges to it at the end of the cast. Scooch or else you'll suffer his dot. He also does a whirlpool of blades, throwing out a spinning sword that travels back to him. Avoid the sword and try not to have coven flashbacks. If Jolly is on your team, he'll periodically buff the party with Trade Winds Vigor, giving all of you a 40% sprint for 10 seconds. On Heroic and Mythic difficulties, you'll also have to deal with the bartender. Rummy Mancomb will chuck three types of brew in the area, and both players and bosses can be hit by them for their effects. They all look the same, so keep an eye on Rummy's cast bar to figure out which one is coming at you next. The Caustic Freehold Brew is a dot, so players want to be out of that, and the bosses can be pulled into it. The Confidence Brew is a crit buff, and the Invigorating Brew is a haste buff, so players can take those, and the bosses should be kept clear. The Ring of Booty is a three-step experience, but combat drops between each step so you can res, drink, and rebuff. The actual boss is more or less just the last phase. Phase 1 is Catch the Pig, which is surprisingly annoying. He is a fast little dude. Once someone finally manages to click on him, you can move on with your day. Ludwig von Tortolan comes out for Phase 2. Here, you want to just avoid the bouncing shells and kill him. With that sorted, it's time for the actual boss. Phase 3 is Trothak the Shark Puncher. Ripper Punch is a dot that goes onto a random player in melee. It's unavoidable, so healers just keep an eye on it and pop cooldowns if needed. Shark Tornado is fairly self-explanatory. Get out and wait for it to be over. Unless you have a cooldown and you really want to keep stabbing him, live your life. His Shark Toss does an AoE that needs to be dodged, and that AoE spawns a flailing shark. The shark is unkillable and will chase the nearest enemy, just kind of like AoE flopping its way along. That needs to be kited away from the group. Whatever you do, don't walk the shark into melee. On Heroic and Higher, the sharks start to move faster, but you also get Chum to kite them through. The Chum will slow the sharks as they eat it, but it'll also slow you down if you step in it, so keep your shoes clean. 
finally, now and then he'll rearm, and by that I mean he attaches a shark to his arm. Sounds like a good way to de-arm if you ask me. The boss charges to a nearby shark doing damage to the path and then despawns the shark as he sticks it to his slapper. Don't be between a man and his sharks. It just ends badly for everyone. Our final boss is Harlan Sweet and you come across him just living his best life. He's got the same abilities on all difficulties and through his whole encounter, but he gains powerful buffs at 60% and 30%. Swift Wind Saber fires out a set of wind blades that'll hurt and knock you back. Don't get hit, and just in case he gets you, try to have your back to something that's not fire. Cannon Barrage targets a player and rains down a string of fire patches under their feet. Run that around the edges and try to group the fire as tight together as he can. His third mechanic, Avastia, summons adds which fixate and explode in an AoE if they reach their target. Everyone needs to turn and slow, stun, and kill the adds. If one is absolutely going to get you, then do it with a cooldown and away from others. At 60% he picked up Loaded Dice All Hands, which is basically just more of everything. More Saber Blades, more players with a Cannon Barrage, and more adds. Have fun! At 30% he gets the Loaded Dice Mana War buff. On top of all the extra stuff from before, the boss gains 100% attack speed and does everything more often. This can get overwhelming fast, so save cooldowns for this phase and get him down. So that should get you through Freehold. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Leave a like for me if this helped you out and have a wonderful, wonderful day.